Is it not? Oh, wow. I have a very pink chair. It's very pink. It's very oak for set up we've got here. Hey, everybody hanging out in uh, the... It's sunny. Then it rains. Yeah. Then it's foggy. Mm -hmm. Then it's sunny. Oh. Then it rains. I know, I know, it's like Buffalo, New York, where I grew up. If you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. Right. Other than the weather, how has Comic Con Wales been treating you? We're so honored to have you here. Thank you. No, it's been really lovely. Uh, it's just, you know, I just want to see the country more. Uh, you know, we come, we get off the plane, fly overnight, eight hour time difference. I'm like, ah, and then we come over here, have a great time, meet a lot of great people. And, uh, and then by, you know, when it's all done at the end of the day, I don't get a chance to get in the car, which is my favorite thing, and just drive around and see yeah. the countryside. You Next time. Do you ever get a chance to do that, whether it's Comic Cons or perhaps filming on location where you do get to see the city? Well, I'll tell you, every time I go on location, they're like, well, listen, we're going to have a van pick you up or a car take you to work. And I tell them all the time, I said, listen, just get me around the car. And you don't have to send a driver, you don't have to do that, because I'll drive. Like, I'll give you an example, like on the Long Ranger. You know, we worked on that for seven months in all of these American Southwest, like, iconic locations. And I got a great SUV. I'm like, you don't have to drive me at 3 o'clock in the morning going to work. And I would just love, just give me directions, give me a place, I'll waze it, Google it, whatever. And, and I would much rather just drive myself. Yeah. Yeah, because then you see everything. Right. I'm sure you've been to some amazing locales in your travels and for work. What are some of your favorite places to travel to? Uh, I, I, I bring up Lone Ranger because we just, you know, we'd shoot three weeks in one amazing place. And it was like, it was like a circus, it was a caravan. I, I would never been on a production that big, like literally would take, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating here, helicopters would come and take whole like train cars to a new location. And then there was trailers, and then there was one that had all the horses that we were on. It was like, it was like Ringling Brothers. It was like the circus. It, we went from town to town and yeah, that was really cool. And, and in many places, you know, Black Hawk Down in, in, in Morocco and uh, Perfect Storm being in a fishing village in New England. Pretty cool. Yeah, Lone Ranger was just cinematically beautiful film visually, yes. Now, we're gonna have some questions from the fans in a minute, but just a few more for me. You've done so many amazing things. And I was saying to my husband that I've seen you in literally everything. You're just, you know, you're, have had such an amazing career, but one of my personal favorites is The Longest Yard. Yes. So, obviously, Adam Sandler, I mean, being a wrestling person, it's great to see comedic chops from the likes of Kevin Nash and people like that. What was it like working on that film? I, you know, I, listen, I'm an American football fan, and uh, so we have all of these, like, monster wrestlers that are in it, you know, like Kevin Nash, six foot ten, Stone Cold Steve Austin, all these you know, Goldberg, these massive wrestlers. Then we have these ex-former NFL football players, and they all ha happen to be, like, on the defense. So they come up to the line, and I'm playing a quarterback, and they're all like, we're going to get you. And, and so we, every time I went out on the field and I wasn't the stunt guy, I would walk down the line and look at each of them and go, screen actors go, screen actors go. Like, like, don't go jumping on top of me. Uh, but, you know, to play football, and uh, you know what, all these guys is pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like a really fun cast. Out of all your amazing roles, and there are so many, are there some that you're particularly proud of that maybe wasn't maybe the largest role, but for you, you're very proud of your performance? Um, I, well, it's hard for me to critique that a little bit because about 20 years ago, I, I, I truly stopped. It happens once in a while if I go to a premiere, but I don't really watch things that I work on. Um, like I worked on Prison Break for three seasons, and I don't think I ever really saw Prison Break. Because I, I just, I don't watch it. Um, and, I, and I don't watch films unless I go to a premiere, which is always like, um, for me personally, the joy for me is, is in the doing. I, I really, I, I love the journey. Um, um, I, I don't think I'm a person of drama. I, I love to have a good time. And, if I'm having a good time and I feel good about what I'm doing and the people I'm working with, then it's a, then it's a worthwhile experience. For sure. Well, speaking of good time, we have such an amazing roster of celebrities that have come here to come to help us, many of whom you've met on the stage or at the autograph area. But was there anybody here in terms of Comic-Con that you were excited to reunite with? I know you know some of the Sons of Anarchy guys, 
and coats. But other than Bruno Knight, was there anyone else you were excited to meet for the first time? Hi. <laughs> How are you? Do you want to come up here with me? No, oh, he's got that little iPad. All right. I met him earlier. Um, well, you know, it was like, I didn't, honestly, I didn't know who was here. I was, in, I, I live in California, but I was coming from Montreal when I came here. And uh, so I didn't really know the lineup, but it was really cool to sit down. And Danny Club was sitting next to me. We did a film years ago called Switchback. So I sat down and I'm like, oh, there's Danny. That's kind of cool. Because, you know, when I'm home, I, I love it when friends come and visit me in LA and they're like, especially when I was younger, uh, you know, and they were like, come on, man, what, where's the clubs? What, where's it happening? I'm like, I, I know kid friendly restaurants. Um, so I don't really get out about to see a ton of things and more of a homebody. Kim Coates, who many of you know, um, from Sons of Anarchy. Coates, he had met doing Black Hawk Down before he started Sons of Anarchy. And he lives 11 minutes from my house. So I, I, Coates is the only one I ever really see all the time. He's so much fun. Obviously, we had a lot of fun with the Sons of Anarchy panel. Always gets a little wild, but in the best possible way. Now, guys, if you have questions, go ahead and come up to microphones here on the left and right. Don't be shy. This is our Sunday Funday, our last panel of the day, so come ask some questions. But we love to ask our celebrities here. Obviously. Oh, oh, we have a question. Excuse me. I can't have a moment to myself. Bill, um, I, sorry, Bill. Bill, I'm, I'm such a fan. And I've been going to meet you my whole life, and I just want to ask something. Is it true that you've got most of your incredible acting chops from Kim Coates? Listen, I, I would like to answer that question. Uh, Neil? <laughs> He's having a smoke. How much is it How much is it to ask me a question? All right, hold on a second. <laughs> Get that credit card machine. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. I, I learned everything I know Thanks, from him. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Bye. Good night, everybody. I'm going to tell you a true story. So after we did Black Hawk Down, I, I've never met him before. And this, <laughs> I don't think I've ever told you about this. So like the second night we're in Morocco, I'm sitting there with folks and we're going to be there for five months. and. We ended up getting like a couple of bottles of Moroccan Cabernet. I, I don't know. I didn't know they made wine in Morocco. They do. And we drank a lot of it. And then Kosi's Canadian. I'm from Buffalo, New York. And after like two or three bottles, he was explaining to me that Buffalo's really part of Canada. I'm like, I don't think so, buddy. Um, but I was such a fan of him as an actor, and obviously as a friend, uh, about three or four years after we did that, I went to another friend of mine and I said, you know what, I got an idea for a story. And then it took 10, 12 years to make it, but I wrote a film and I wrote it just to do with him called Holbrook. And then eventually Sons of Anarchy came up and it, it, it was a summertime movie and that's when they shot Sons of Anarchy. So I, I just had to wait. And then when he finished the show, I think it was this summer after that, we finally made the movie. So if you haven't seen it, it's, our little labor of love called Cobra. That's your homework tonight, guys. Look it up. Cobra. It's awesome. <laughs> Look at we have invited you guys to come on up to the microphones left and right. But a quick question for me because the entire weekend we've heard a lot from um, creatives in the industry or people that are hoping to become actors or directors or filmmakers. What advice would you have for someone that's getting into the entertainment field? Um, you know, when I, I, I graduated college and I have uh, a bachelor's, a four year degree in criminal justice. Because I, I thought, you know, I mean, I applied to college and I got in and, and, and I applied as, as a criminal justice major because I think my father said, you know what, that would be a noble career. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be a criminal justice major. Well, by the time I graduated, I'm like, I'm never going to do this. And I kind of knew that about halfway through, but I was having a really good time. So I'm like, no, no, just do well. Uh, and then I moved to New York and I, I remember that's one of the things that people said to me all the time when I first got to New York was, if there's anything else you want to do, do it. Because it's such a commitment, you know, to go for it. And if you're going to do it, you know, you just, you, you jump off the, the, the mountaintop. That's all there is to it. You got to go absolutely 100%. Believe in yourself. Uh, but most of all, it's not about, um, and I think it's a little bit different now, in the age of information and, and 
you know, TikTok and Twitter and everything, and you know, I think a lot of people want to be famous. You know, back when I graduated college, I wanted to, I wanted to be good. I mean, I moved to New York, I didn't even audition for the first four years I was there. I wanted to really feel like I had a sense of, of what I was doing as, as an actor. Um, and, I, and I think that's the most important thing, because the people that really care about the craft and what they're doing are the ones that are still doing it. Yeah. So my advice is just, you know, dive in, work on it, read the books, study, take classes, never give it up, never lose the vision, never lose, you know, the heart. Because if you don't have that, it ain't happening. Oh. Great advice. Give the homework. Round of applause. We're just getting free after master classes from you at this point. We really are so thrilled. We've got some questions. Let's go to the microphone on the line. Two first. Hi. Um, what was the experience like when John uh, began? Uh, okay, so I, I've had the pleasure five times in my life to work with the producer Jerry Bruckman. Uh, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, Black Hawk Down, Lone Ranger, and uh, 12 Strong. So Jerry Bruckheimer is one of like, the most amazing producers. Also, he makes a lot of like military type movies. Um, obviously, I just said three of them. And if you make a military movie in the States, what you really want is you want to get DOD, which is Department of Defense approval. Because if they like your story, then they'll support you and then they'll roll out the carpet and, it, like, especially, you know, Armageddon, we're making a movie about, like, traveling to space, and DOD gave them their approval, and what that means is we got to shoot at uh, uh, Houston Mission Control, we got to shoot at Cape Canaveral, where, they, where the rockets take off in Florida, we got to shoot at Edwards Air Force Base, uh, you know, you go to these places that you've heard about, you've seen photos, and all of a sudden, you're standing there and I'll give you an example. We were doing Armageddon and we're on the launch pad, 285 feet up, and they're, they're one, of the, one of the space shuttles is on it and they're preparing it. It's taking off in like a month. And I'm standing up there and I'm, this is like CNN. I'm looking at like, you know, a rocket in front of me. And this was just before like when cell phones were kind of exploding and somebody had a cell phone up there and I said, can, can you borrow your cell phone? And I just dialed the number and I just stepped on the side for a second. I was like, hey, mom, uh, <laughs> this is really unbelievable right now. So uh, it, it, it was so memorable for that. And it was, you know, you know, it's just fun to save the planet. You know, it's something I do every day. It was really great. Great question, thanks. That's the quote from this panel. It's fun to save the planet. Yeah. I love that. Got a question here on the right. So in prison break, obviously you have the rights under the law, but if you could choose one of the criminals to pay, would you and who would you play? If I could choose, tell me again. If you were, if you were on the in the criminal, um, with all the rest of the guys from prison, who would you play, and would you want to be on that side? Well, in a way, I think Alex Mahone kind of was on that side. Um, I never thought about that before. I don't know. Um, I don't know, I just, I, I, I love to, to, well, you gotta remember too, when I, they shot the first season of Prison Break, and then I remember my agent calling me and said, hey, I got a script, uh, I want you to read this, uh, it's a true story, it was a Tuesday, and they said, read the script, you gotta tell me by tomorrow, because if you like it, you gotta travel the next day, because you work the next day. So my question was, well, who did they hire that just backed out? <laughs> you're, not, you're not casting this last minute. Didn't matter. I read the, the script and I'm like, oh, I think this is really good. And it wasn't even shooting in LA, it was in Dallas. So, and then I'm thinking, wait a minute, it's a show called Prison Break and they, they already broke out of prison. So now it's the chase. Um, so I went to Dallas and uh, so you got a whole group of guys that were in prison. They were pretty clicky and tight. But it was fine because, you know, I was the other side of the coin and I'm going to get you. So I, I didn't mind like having a little bit of separation. It's not like we didn't get to hang out and get to know each other. But I definitely had my own journey on it. And uh, I, I like that journey better than the, the other side. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, because the longest journey, we'd love to hate you, but you were mean. I've, not, I've never played a mean guy in my life. Misunderstood, <laughs> but not, not mean. My mistake, misunderstood. <laughs> Get a question, you have a lot. Um, you found a very um, 
rich career. You know, you've starred in a lot of both movies and television series. And I was wondering, um, which one, which style do you prefer working on? Is it film or television, and why? Well, you make a lot more money in television, <laughs> but uh, and, unless you're, you know, Bruce Willis. Um, <laughs> I, I always thought for, if I had to pick one, it would be film. And mainly because, you know, television, you shoot a, a one hour episode in about seven, eight, nine days. It's, it's like five pounds of bologna in a two pound bag. It's like every day is really tough to make. And you better know your character and be comfortable with it because, you know, it comes usually on a television show, you're on the last day of shooting an episode is when you get the script for the next one. So if you know your character, you, you, you find a rhythm and you, you, know, you, go, you, you can find it real quick. I think with movies, even smaller independent movies, there's a little more time. Even like when I made Cold Brook, you know, we had 20 days to shoot it, which if it was, you know, if that was two episodes of a, of a series, that would have been 10 days per episode. I'm thinking like age time. Uh, so even with a smaller movie, it, it, there's a little more attention to detail uh, and you can take your time a little bit, but I, 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 I don't know, I just, I, I like the journey of, of a movie. I like to start something, and I like to finish it. You know, I, just, I like completing something. Yeah. My favorite thing when I'm on location and I work on something, like a film, is finish it, pack my bags, get on the plane, and I have this tradition where plane takes off, get myself a beer or a glass of wine, and I always read the script of what I just did. And I go through and I wonder, okay, you read it before you got here, now read it after. Was it anything like you like you thought it was gonna be or you wanted it to be? Um, film. It's really interesting, thank you very much. You're welcome. Dropping that knowledge, very cool. I know this lady. Oh yes, we'll go to her. Hi. Oh, yes, to the right, we'll come right back to you. I've been waiting. Hi, right, so after Fighting Aliens and the second Independence Day film, yeah. uh, and with the recent whistleblowers in the US, I wonder what your opinion was if uh, Aliens are among us now. Can I tell you something? There are 16 of them in this room. Right now. No, and I know 11 of them. Yep, 12. Um, I, do we really think we're the only ones that ever like travel the universe? I, I don't think so. You know, have I seen a UFO? I, I, well, at one time with Kim Coates, never mind. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, listen, in our lifetime, are we going to get the truth? Probably not. But maybe we'll see. Thank you. All right. After that, uh, listen. Awesome. By the way, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. Go back to your seat. Right <laughs> hey, after some Moroccan cabaret, cabaret, you can see a lot of stuff. I can't see anything. And I don't know. Look at this lovely lady. Hi. Hi again. I was wondering when you went from Holbrook, you sort of wore four hats. Which one do you prefer? Is it the acting, the screenwriting? Well, you know, it was the first thing that, that, that I ever directed, and now I'm working on something new. And making an independent film is like, it's like climbing a mountain. Uh, it's the hardest thing in the world. And but when I made Cold Brook, I, I, I read a lot of books on, you know, directors on directing. There was one in particular. And it, it was, it asked 20 famous directors, like Martin Scorsese and Spielberg. It asked them all the same 10 questions. And I read that book because I just wanted to educate myself for this journey. It's a good book. And like half of them talked about that, you know, you know, dealing with actors is really, you know, is, 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 is the hard part because they're brilliant with their vision and camera and that. And that's the part that I felt really insecure about. My favorite thing was talking to actors uh, because it was so interesting. You know, if an actor has a question, you really, you really want to give the answer and inspire them. And every single actor is different. I had a woman that, uh, named Robert Ryder who played my wife in, in the film. She was so technical. When she asked a question, it took her five minutes, and you better have a five minute answer back. It's specific because that's what she heard. Um, I, you know, like Coatsy, Coatsy's an emotional being. I tell him, think about this. And that's all I had to tell him. And he was like, oh, I like that, I like that. And then just let him go. 
that's the part that I, I love the most, and that was the most fun part. Um, you know, it was weird too because you know I'm, I'm directing myself, and I would look at the monitor, but I don't like I said I don't really watch myself, so I didn't really want to look at the monitor all the time to watch what I was doing. So in the beginning, you know, day two or something, we're shooting the film, and, and I looked at Coach because I had just about every scene with him, and I, it's true. And I said, I said, you know, listen, hey, how was I in that last thing? And he was like, it wasn't that good, buddy. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you, sure. So that was the last time I asked him how I was doing. Um, director, can't wait to do it again. Say hi to Coach I will. <laughs> yeah. Great question. If you have any more guys, we have time for probably one or two final questions that we've got to let them get back. But did you always see yourself um, doing things behind the camera as well as on the screen? Or that you later got into? No, no. And I remember, you know, being asked the question like 20 years ago, you're going to get on the other side of the camera? And I remember saying, no, it's just, it's not, it's not. It really, I'm telling you, I got inspired by, you know, my, my friends went with coats because I'm like, you know, we're a couple of guys, Listen, we're not the big movie stars of Hollywood. We're respected character guys, and that's what we do. And every time that I worked on something, and it happened a couple of times, um, it happened in this series that I did called Crossing Lines, it happened in Prison Break. I would read the script and I would see a, a character come up and I would say to the producers, you gotta, you gotta offer Kim Post this role. And they're like, do you think he'll do it? I'm like, I'll make him do it. So. Coach, he came on, he did a few episodes on Prison Break, he came on, did a few episodes on this other show that I did. So here I am with him working, and it was one of my favorite things to work with him. That's what really inspired me, of like, I, when are we ever gonna get a chance to do something together, like a whole feature film, unless I really dive in and, and, and write this? So that's what really was the impetus to, to do it, and finally put it all together, and, and we did it, and it was, you know, was the highlight of my career. Control your narrative. Very cool. We've got a question here on the left. Hi, uh, I was wondering how you actually got into acting. So I, I, I graduated, like I said, with a criminal justice major, and it's I went two years at one school, uh, and then I, I at the time it was only a two-year college, but I wasn't done because I was having a really good time, and and I met this girl named Rose. Anyway, it's a long story. So I transferred to another school. And for the second two years, it was my junior year, first week of classes, and I get a, a, a message from an admissions counselor that I had to go see him in the office. And the admissions, I don't know what it's about, and the admissions counselor said to me, you're short one fine arts credit to graduate. And I'm like, okay, what's a fine arts credit? And they said, well, you know, it's an intro to theater or something like that. And I'm like, huh? Oh, those classes are both at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by the time you're a junior, I don't do 8 a.m. So I'm like, do you have anything else? And they're like, we have an improv class. Uh, okay, what's well, improv? They explained it to me. And 12 noon, I'm like, I'll take that class. So I took the improv class. I, I never, when I was in high school, I, I don't think I ever saw a play. You know, we used to sneak out the back door and go play hockey. And so here I'm taking this improv class, and I'm just, I'm having the time of my life. Uh, I just, I never kind of felt like that before. Just being in the moment and on there. And I would say about halfway through the class that year, this teacher, she was a, a former hippie named Sally Rubin, I still remember her name. And she said to me one day, can you stay after class? I want to talk to you a little bit. And I said, yeah, sure. So everybody left the class. She shut the door, she sat down, and she said, I think you should do this. And I have to tell you, I was like saying, why don't you go build a spaceship and go to Mars? I was really out of the blue. And I said, uh, really? And she said, yeah, I mean, I, I teach acting for years and I watch people and I, I really think you should pursue this in your life. So I took other acting classes just out of curiosity to take them, graduated with my degree and knew by the time I drove home from a commencement ceremony that I was probably not going to follow criminal justice. And uh, I, I reached out, I did some homework, I auditioned for an acting school in New York called the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And I went to do two monologues and I, I was never so nervous in my life, I still remember it. My hands were shaking and uh, I got in. Wow. 
So I moved to New York and um, I play a lot of cops. <laughs> I just didn't make one. Great question. Great question. Thank you. And shout out to the teachers out there because if it wasn't for your teacher, Absolutely. believing in you, yes. Any teachers in the audience? There we go. Yeah. There we Round of applause for you. Inspire everybody. That's very cool. What are the final question from this? Final time? question. Um, is there a script that you've ever teamed down and made to regret it? And on the flip side, is there a project you wanted to be a part of but just couldn't be? Well, there's a lot of, there's an awful lot of things that, you know, that I would have liked to have been a part of. But, it, 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 you know, as time went on, I, I always told my agents and my managers, you know, listen, if I don't get something, you don't have to tell me who got it. God bless all actors, I hope they get a job. And I really mean that. If, if, it, if it doesn't go my way, it is what it is. I don't spend a lot of downtime with it. You know, 25 years ago, I might get bummed out for a week. 18 years ago, I get bummed out for four days. My downtime now is like pump 10 minutes. You know, I, I'll finally go, oh, that's a drag. Hey, honey, can I get a shot of tequila? Um, I move on really quick. So, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I can honestly say, no, I've never, I've never had something that, that I said it's not for me and I wish that I would have made another, I really don't. And we all hear the stories of people that go, they turn something down and it ends up being like the hugest thing in the world and they look back and they're like, oh, I can't believe I didn't do that. I just, I never, I, I get a gut feeling of this is a worthy journey, I'm, I'm gonna take this journey. Sometimes I say no and even, you know, my agent will go, are you sure about that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. I, I, don't, I don't see it, I don't feel it. It's okay, it's all right. Somebody else will do it. Just not for me. Thank you, that's fantastic. Yeah, and what a refreshing answer because a lot of the times we ask people about acting, they stress the fact that it's a lot of rejection, it's a lot of self-confidence, right? Oh, get used to hearing the word no. You know, I, I mean, listen, you know, a lot of people that are not in, in this business, um, you know, you know, a job change happens or something. It's, it's big. It's, you know, actors from, you know, as soon as you commit to doing it, get ready because things things aren't going to work out a lot of the time. It is what it is. Love that positivity. Well, any final words for your fans? Or what are you looking forward to after? Or any final words for your adoring fans in Wales? Because we're also happy to have you there. Well, I, I wish I, I want to come back now and spend some time here. To really, I'm so glad I flew in on Friday when the sun was shining because I was, I had a window seat and I'm looking out the, at the countryside as we're flying in and I'm like, oh my God, it's just beautiful out here. And I just didn't get a chance to see it. What am I looking forward to? I've got to fly to Amsterdam tomorrow, get on the flight, it's like 11 hours to LA, and I'm praying to God I sleep. Because, you know, it's been fun here, but you know, I'm so tired and at one o'clock in the morning, I'm like, hey. And uh, I'm calling my lovely wife, Kim, and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm not sleeping, bro. <laughs> but the jet I'll come back. Yes. I'll come back. We love to have him back. Am I right? Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank 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 you.